I like to challenge myself as a producer by occasionally trying to make an arrangement using the least amount of material as I can to make the most amount of music from that small amount of source material. So in this case, I'm going to challenge myself to make a 90-second piece of music in 90 minutes using just one kick drum sample as starting material. All right, let's go. I'm going to start my timer right now for 90 minutes. So let's audition the sound that I'm working with here. That's it. It's a kick drum that I've used in a bunch of my productions before. Um, so the first thing I would do is I would drag this drum into a simpler instrument. Now there's a lot of fun things you can do right within simpler. And sometimes I um, move the sound over to sampler and you can do that by right clicking on the header of the instrument and selecting simpler to sampler. But from right now, let's take a look at sample or simpler and see what we can do right here. So by creating a loop, you can shorten the sound to a very short amount of time and it tends to start to sound like a pitched instrument like a bass in this case. And if I move around the loop area to different moments in the kick drum sample, we'll get different types of almost sounds like a motor on this section that's closer to the attack. I like that a lot. <laughs> so one way of knowing if we've uh, how to get it into a musical pitch, which is important to play it with other instruments in a musical context, if I'm going to use this as, let's say, our bass sound, um, an, a useful effect to, to bring in right now is just the tuner. So in the audio effects, pull uh, a tuner onto the channel. And when I press middle C, it says it's reading at an A. I'm able to get it pretty close to a C here. Okay, pretty close. It's like a little sharp, um, but I could maybe fix that after the next step. So what I'm going to do is create a note, a MIDI note, to play, to perform this. Here's a cool tip. If you have the headphone icon here enabled to monitor what's what's coming in and you put your cursor on the timeline and then press a note on I'm using a piano keyboard then you can do what's called step time or step recording in Ableton and press the right arrow key just on your QWERTY keyboard and it will draw in and I'm continuously repeating the right arrow key to make a longer note and in this case is a measure long okay and maybe I'll make it two measures long 
because you never know. Let me do that down here. I'm going to change the length to two and then take that note and just stretch it out to the duration of the, of the measure. So what I have is a C note of a, sounds like a bass synth. I've done nothing else to it, but I'm going to export it um, by freezing and flattening the track. So now I've got an audio clip Oops. with our note that's in C. Um, If I could spell it, it'd be a little better. But I named it Bass Note C, just so that it'd be easy to tell what we're working with here. And if I um, were to create another MIDI channel, I could, cr I could drag that C note in. Great, and now it's, um, a two measure long sample that I can play um, pretty regularly because I've resampled it. So if I was working with the um, version one step ago that was in the first simpler, then it could possibly really change. It was sounding uh, different up a few notes than it was down a few notes. So this will kind of uh, keep the 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 sound more similar for perhaps a larger range so that I could use it a little more easily in in this production. So one thing I'm going to do is turn it up. I could just gain the sample up right here. Also, while you're experimenting like this, it's always smart to have a limiter on your master channel. So I highly suggest doing that. Um, I usually use uh, a FabFilter Pro L2 limiter in my productions, but I will use the Ableton limiter um, because I'm assuming if you're working in Ableton Live, you've got that. Um, and so we're, we're gonna be able to have the same setup here. I'm just going to use internal Ableton Live audio effects and um, keep things as simple as possible. Okay, so back to my bass note. Oops, the instrument that I'm creating here. I've turned it up. I want it to loop. And I want to get rid of that. Um, I want to get rid of that click if I can. So I'm going to turn up this little fade. be tricky to do. Um, let me look at the beginning of the sound as well and see if I've got kind of a clicky. Yeah, the beginning, you can see that starts off of the center. Okay, and if I 
at the end to be on the center crossing there, I think we'll have a less clicky loop. There we go. Still a little bit there, but I, I doubt I'll have too many really long notes. So I'm going to work with that because um, I don't have much time. I set a timer. And part of the reason I set a timer is because moving fast to make these decisions will get you through the production d deeper into your production quicker. And that's my goal right now is because it's a challenge. Okay, so um, we've got the bass note. What else can we do? Cool. I'm going to actually put some audio effects on this one, and I'm going to copy uh, to a new channel where I'm going to experiment further. But I don't want to lose this basic um, setup that I like. So I'm going to add a couple of audio effects that I know are going to be helpful. Um, I'm going to start with a uh, glue compressor. And after that, I'm going to put on a saturator. And another glue compressor. What that really does is adds a bit of distortion to the signal and then compresses it a little bit. And so it just makes it louder and full. Okay, I'm also, being that this is a bass sound, I'm going to use a utility and I'm going to make the bass, the low end of this sound, mono, up to 200 and let's go up to 300. Now, if I make it a little wider up top. still sound good in the bottom. So um, I'm going to zoom back out. Now, uh, Simpler has um, a filter with some different algorithms for imitating uh, analog filters from synthesizers It's and other stuff. So um, by selecting... drive to these analog modeled filters and that I like that all right I'm also going to transpose this um, up an octave so that I could perform it on the keyboard to be a bass, to represent a bass. All right. I'm going to take that and I'm going to group all of these related devices together to create a rack. And um, I'm just going to name it. Actually, I want to name the rack itself. Instrument rack. Base one. Base one. Okay. Now I'm going to um, duplicate that because for base two, I just want to see if this is going to work in ways that I uh, will like or that it could be useful. But sometimes um, just using the filter and simpler. Is, is great and all, but you can get uh, further 
and do more things, including adding some FM synthesis um, in sampler. So what I did is I right clicked on the simpler header and it gave me the option of turning it into a sampler. Now sampler, as opposed to having two tabs, it has five tabs, one, two, three, four, five, six tabs. Pardon me. Um, we're not going to deal with zone right now, but we're going to deal with um, a bit of each of these other tabs. So on the pitch osc or oscillator page here, I can add a pitch envelope, which sounds like this. Or in the other direction, It ramps the pitch up 13 semitones from the start over the course of this amount of time. So you can do it slower or faster. And it would give you a little bit more of an attack. get a pretty strong punchy attack if that's what you're looking for using this technique as well. Now on this page we also, I'm going to turn that off for a second, have this oscillator that you can add. Okay, you can add You hear how that's changing the sound. It's taking a sine wave and using frequency modulation to mix that with the original signal. So I can use the envelope shaper here to add that oscillator to just the beginning. So you can make a real strong attack. Or have it fade in and change the sound over time. Okay, um, in the filter section here, I can add a shaper, which is more gain and distortion, and play with this filter. And I can give the filter an envelope. In this case, it's opening up over this period of time. One, it creates a bit of a vowel shape. I'm going to keep moving because now I've got two different types of bass sounds.
what else can I do um, with what other instruments do I need? Um, and I'm going to create some uh, of those specific instruments right now. Let's think about that. How about um, a snare drum? So to create a snare drum, I'm going to drag our original kick into, um, let's see. if you highlight a channel, the, a MIDI channel, and it, it will say drop an instrument or sample here in the box on the bottom of the screen. So then you can just drag a sample from your project directly to that space to create a simpler automatically. So if I were to loop a later piece of audio, ooh, hold on. That for some reason has got a very deep sub I'm using the amp envelope here to try to get rid of that click. Ooh, and I'm gonna resample some of that. That was a surprise. I didn't expect, let's put in one note. That, that, that note feels like it's holding together. I'm gonna make a two bar MIDI clip, and I'm going to put that note great, and I'm going to export that by freezing the track and flattening it and now I've got uh, an audio clip. So I'm going to go through that process again, inserting a MIDI channel. And just for my own ease, I'm going to put it right under our, we're going to call this sub note. Because it sounded th like the, the low fundamental was very clean for some reason in that little the way that that little piece of, of audio was looping around. It's almost like, okay. So by double clicking this empty MIDI channel, it says drop an instrument or sample here. I drag our sample to that place in the gray area and it creates a simpler with the note And I can turn the gain up. I'm going to use the filter section to remove some of that kind of top buzz. And I'm going to add a bit of drive. I'm going to make the attack a little slower so that it does not much of a click. Turn this LFO off. Turn the volume up just a little bit. Let's use some audio effects to enhance the bassiness and the clean or clean-ish sub tone. Sometimes drum bus can help. Let me try. That's a trick. Yeah. Ooh. That's what I was looking for. It's just the default preset for drum bus turned this into a huge 808 bass, tuned bass. Um, and so I'm going to get out my tuner again and get this thing as close as I can 
to uh, to be in tune. And then it's a little sharp. So I'm going to move my, let's see here. down 26 cents that's a percentage of one semitone um i was able to get this bass note in tune and now i feel like i have a really um powerful sub note here so i'm gonna rename this one sub note and i'm going to take the track that we used to create this just drag it on down to the bottom which is what i'm going to do with all of my kind of used material and one trick is to just deactivate those group them and deactivate that group Close it up. And so then you can just hide the material that you're not going to use, but that was sort of like your scratch um, working material in case you need it again, in case I want to reference the, that uh, resampled bit of audio. Okay, so we've got, just to review here, bass one, bass two, sub note. Ah, we're, we're doing well. Um, so I think I need a snare drum next. And here's something important to remind you to do is save your work. <laughs> this is something that's easy to forget. And you can get pretty far along and then realize that... Um, that you're at risk of losing your project if you don't say that's what that's what so here i am saving um let's call this one the kick drum Kick drum song one. Okay. Let's make a snare drum. So I'm going to create a new MIDI channel. I'm going to take my snare drum and I'm going to drag it. Now I double clicked on that MIDI channel's header to make sure that it's saying drop, into simp drop an instrument or sample here. And then I'm going to do that. It's a shortcut and it saves you a few clicks um, trying to drag it in in other ways. Um, but okay, we want to make this into a snare drum, a snare drum. So how do I go about this? First thing I'm going to do is change this simpler to a sampler because I know there are some tools in that oscillator section that could be useful here. So a snare drum... is definitely going to have a pitch envelope that's going to help. All right. Um, another thing that can help is in this oscillator section, experimenting with adding some noise. Now, noise, the, the pitch of the noise or the, the tuning won't matter as much because it's noise is all of the pitches at once. But I can bring it down.
until I'm liking the blend. But that noise kind of reminds me of the snares on a snare drum, shaking with it. Um, we can... change the length of the pitch get a little stereo width just a little bit go into our filter section turn on one of the analog modeling filters and turn up some of that drive and the shaper Maybe hard shaper. No, that's too distorted. Soft shaper. And then we can use the volume envelope. to shape the whole sound so that you get a sharper attack and then it comes down noticeably after that. I'm kind of liking that. Okay, let's um, try that drum bus on this faux snare that we're making here um, to see if uh, if that's going to get us. Where did it go? Oh, I've got. I'm sorted by rank. Um, okay, definitely helping. Yeah, definitely helping. Um, let's get my glue compressor in there with the soft clip to make sure we're not, our attack isn't going over the. I'm liking that though, there's our snare. Now, by resampling that, which is what I'm about to do, and, I'll sh and here's another way of doing that. Um, that's nice and easy, which is to um, enable. Oh wow, what's going on with that? Oh right, it's because I'm streaming. I've got some looping going on with my vocal mic which is, was all of a sudden passing through the project. Hey, a little fun, sample that. Um, so what I'm just gonna do is re-record, manually re-record our uh, input from, what is this one called? Where, where are we? Uh, let's call this one snare. Great. And then over here, my input will be snare. And then I'm just going to create a little MIDI clip here with one snare drum on it. Let's mute this guy. And when I press record, oops. There, it writes one snare for us. Um, and then we can pull that one into another uh, simpler. I know it seems repetitive, um, but what's going on here is that we've created a really nice snare drum sample from our original kick drum sample using tools. In this case, it was a simpler a sampler. 
Um, but now we can take that f recombobulated sound and pitch it around the uh, the keyboard to find a, you know where it should where it sits best. And we can do a little more kind of sample processing in here too. Like one thing I might do is use the filter, switch it to high pass, and go down to where the snare fundamental is, the lowest note of the snare drum. and use this filter to accentuate that. Oh wow, you can really hear what these analog f model filters do. Yeah. I like that. Um, Oops. Now I have a few things named snare. Luckily I misspelled one of them, so that's not gonna be much of a problem picking it out. But I'm gonna change the color of this to something I can pick out. Um, and Gonna take the materials and drag them into our group down here. And this is just the stuff we're not using. And that's to clean up the project. And so now I've got a snare drum, sub note, bass one, bass two, like synth bass character bass kind of things and our original kick drum, kick sample which we might as well put into an instrument right now for ourselves uh here's a new midi track i double click the header to get this drop instrument or sample here i drag our sample in name it and i'm trying to use caps here so i'm going to try to stay consistent just so um i can recognize what's going on and then um there's the kick so let's soup this one up a little bit if this is going to be the kick for our song we what can we do um well add some drive We can put that drum bus on there, which is always kind of, my, ooh, my go-to. It just really heats up the drums in a very drum-centric way. It's basically distortion or saturation, compression, um, and a little transient shaper in here. There's my kick, that's my stair, yeah. Here's my sub. Awesome. So save as, <laughs> and then I change my version to version two. And that's like what I call leaving myself a digital trail of breadcrumbs because if I screw something up or do something weird or get confused in a version of what we're doing right now, I can go back one project version down. So if I'm in version three, I can go back to version two where I hadn't performed 
whatever tasks I did to to mess up my uh, project. So anyway, it's how I ensure myself every once in a while I have to go back a level because I don't like where I ended up because it's all experimentation, you know? Okay, so next move is um, I need some tonal instruments, like some keyboard, piano kind of useful instruments I could play chords on. So I'm going to try our uh, simpler or sampler tricks to see if I can create a pitched instrument that sounds more um, like an organ or a piano or electric piano. So again, I highlight the MIDI header, drag in my sample. Of course, it sounds like that until I loop it and zoom in. It's like a saw wave synth tone. Why not? We'll, we'll export um, a two measure note of that. Um, so what do I do? I create uh, an audio channel. Actually, we're gonna do it with the freeze and flatten method this time. Um, so showing you there's many ways to, to go about each task. So create a MIDI clip. I'm going to create a, let's make it a two bar. Let's export that, freeze and flatten. Let's hear what we got. It's got some strange filtering going on in there, but um, add another MIDI channel, double click on the header and drag our new, th ooh, look at that, very strange. Let's go and turn it into a sampler. Wow. It's got a lot of artifacts and weirdness to it here. So by using an envelope, I can accentuate the beginning of the sound and turning it into more of a, a plucked kind of thing. 
use a little and let's see what we can do with audio effects to make it more interesting um, one thing I think would be chorus And some reverb. Great. Now, one thing I don't want to forget about is making sure that this instrument is tuned with um, the project. So I'm going to take my tuner. I'm going to drop it in here closer to the sound so it doesn't deal with all the effects, but it deals with the raw signal we're, we're trying to tune. And when I press C, I get a G and it's sharp. Okay, so I need to adjust. So it was saying it was a G. So I put the root on G, and so now when I play a C on the piano, it's representing, or it's, it's sounding a C note or close. So now we take our fine tuning, which is called detune. There. Great. So we made a synth. Okay, we're very close. We just need one more thing, I think, to get going to make a very simple piece of music. I'm gonna do another save as here. I need a hi-hat sound. So I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna take this workshop stuff all the way down to my group where I'm housing the used up workshop stuff and i'm going to put a new midi channel underneath my kick drum sample here double click on it and drag my kick drum sample in definitely doesn't sound like a, a hi-hat does it um so i'm going to change it to a sampler i'm going to Raise the pitch. I'm going to use lots of pitch envelope. Okay, that makes it so I don't even need to raise the pitch that much. So let's bring it back down. Kind of like that kind of a sound. I'm gonna use my filter drive and my shaper to get a little more volume see if the hard or sign seems to help a little bit and under the pitch osc section i'm gonna turn on the oscillator and change it to um 
won't depend. So let's start with, we'll start with the sine wave and see what happens. And we can experiment with saw wave. Square wave, which is sounding more hi-hatty if you see here where I'm going with this. And then let's see what I can do. I can um, you use the trick with the filter. To find the moment Hi-hat. Okay, what can we use for effects to accentuate that hi-hat? Well, let's try drum bus. I know I'm a broken record sometimes, but usually percussive. Okay, um, how about a little bit of, a little more saturation. And the soft clipper. Let's bring in an EQ8. Cool, and then we'll use reverb to create a little bit of um, spit size. Not that kind of size, but very short reverbs can give us a little bit of interest. Here's no reverb. There's some reverb. Okay, so that's gonna work for our um, little homemade hi-hat there. Um, I'm going to name it Hi-Hat. All right. So I'm going to take my kick drum sample and move it down into my group. I'm going to rearrange kind of the order of the tracks and, and audition really quickly. Kick, hat, synth. Let's put the snare under the kick. So there's snare. There's hat. That's synth one. Sub. Bass or whatever. Character one and two. Okay, from those elements, I'm going to quickly make an arrangement. All right, so let's do something very basic here. Shift, command, and make a um, MIDI clip, and I'm going to, oops.
what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two bars and then copy that, create, make that into four bars. So um, let's make a snare. There it goes, two and four. Okay, hi hats. I'm just doing one measure or or four eighth notes. Are those sixteenth notes? We're gonna find out here. Yeah, eighth notes. Turn my loop on. To try uh, some kind of a groove just to get this thing feeling a certain kind of a way. Um, let's just go into swing and do swing sixteenths like fifty nine. How about that? We'll use swing 66. That's our global swing for this little jam. Okay. Copy two. Or double that. So now we got four bars. So what I did is I just played around on my keyboard with uh, one of the bass sounds until I kind of liked what I was hearing. And then I pressed capture, which is this little square with broken edges uh, up in the transport area. And capture... takes the most recent... or takes what you've been playing on a on a enabled MIDI track um, and it, it's sort of listening in the background. So if you're pressing capture, even without without the record button enabled, it will bring in what you've been playing on the channel and you can edit it. Um. Oh wow, look at that. <laughs> I recorded, like my kick drum was recording too. That's why it sounded so goofy. So when you make a mistake like that, you sometimes have to figure out what you did wrong. And that was me, user error. I should have disabled the kick drum, but it was recording simultaneously. So um, anyway, let's hear what that sounds like with that bass line and just the proper kick drum. <laughs> So 
So I'm going to take that line and just double it with my sub note sound. Um, and then in order to make that work well, I'm going to remove some bass from our bass one sound because it's going to work in tandem with the sub. So under audio effects, I would choose, you know, auto filter or EQ eight. In this case, I'm going to do EQ eight, um, as a good way of removing the low frequency information here and making room for our sub. So now when we play them together, we get this. Okay, so I'm gonna go into my synth channel and create some uh, chords or some, some harmony to that. idea as I was kind of messing around what if I just played one chord stab but I added an echo so that it was like that now I want to make sure that my rhythm is correct and so I'll probably just quantize that Okay, so then I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to make a variation to my second one. So when, where it goes... I'm going to change that note. I gotta do it on both. And then I'm gonna change my chord for the second one. change this measure too. So I don't like the chord that I've come up with there. So one way to, to deal with that is just delete it. So 
the C minor that I'm looking for. So I did the same procedure I did last time. I just experimented playing it until I found something I liked and pressed capture. bass 2 sound, so it, I don't think you need to use a sound just because you made it. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate my synth 1. I'm going to make it synth 2, like just another version of it. And on synth two, I'll make some changes. Let's get rid of this delay. Change the reverb. I'm using auto filter. In a, a notch setting so that what it's doing is it's taking out just a little bit of information and it's moving that frequency from what it's from where it's taking that uh, audio away around. And I used the spin mode which makes it sort of feel like it's swirling around. So now I'm going to try some kind of top melody thing with this sound. Here's something that we could try. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. But um, it's always fun and worth it is in the MIDI effects, we can put an arpeggiator on this new sound we made.
kind of cleaning up my performance here. another save as version. I'm gonna copy that material and duplicate it. So now I've got 16 bars. <laughs> and what if for the first four bars we had no kick drum? for the first eight bars. And maybe the first four bars is no hi-hats. Interesting. It's starting to sound like like the downbeats actually the do no brum. Like that's a pickup right there. Like this would be the one. And that's a pickup. So that's an arrangement decision. I mean, I'm making this up as I go and it's an experiment. So there's no reason why I can't just shift everything over if I decide I like it better. Um, So let's try that. Um, basically, what I would need to do, if that were the case, is um, move this whole project over. So that lined up with the beginning of the next measure. that kick drum in there at the beginning of the first empty measure so that it starts a measure. So much, it's a little too busy. So let's clear up some space here. Just the intro hats not being all over the place. <laughs> Thank you. 
And I like to mix while I'm writing. So if I can hear that there's something I don't like or that could be a little bit better, I try to work on it when I notice it. Um, in this case, the snare could be brighter. Without that EQ, it sounded like this. Just getting totally lost. Now it brings it up into the mix a little bit better. to get my arrangement squared off here I because I moved everything over to change the phrasing now I've got to make sure that the the phrasing actually continues on to the next copy um, and this can be a, a point of uh, a place where confusion can arise so that's a place to step back a little bit and make sure you get your arrangement correct as you're duplicating sections. You don't want to duplicate a mistake and have the wrong number of measures or beats or something per section because each one will then, your problems will compound upon themselves. Um, let's listen from the beginning. We've got 50 seconds worth of music here. Um, I'm going to listen back to the from the beginning and think about this um, from an arrangement standpoint, like what would be next. We'll be wrapping this up pretty quickly um, here, but I just wanted to kind of get some perspective and see if I can get a little further before I stop. <laughs>
where I feel like it needs something right there. Um, and I'm gonna put a marker there. <laughs> beginning of a measure 18 because I feel like it needs like an open high hat going tss, tss, tss. and so with my last couple of minutes here I'm gonna try to quickly make um an open hi-hat sound from my closed hi-hat sound so Let's, I'm just gonna see what I can do here. I'm work, tr working under a uh, time constraint because I think my timer says I have six minutes left. So I'm gonna create, or I'm gonna duplicate that. These are just some of my shortcut tricks and I'm gonna delete the MIDI. And I'm gonna rename this open hi-hat and I'm gonna I mean I'm just hoping I can do it um, I want to elongate it So one way I can do it would be um, well, that's why I wasn't hearing it. I was I was working on the wrong. So I'm gonna use these envelopes. And I'm going to compress that. freeze and flatten that. I know it's not perfect, but I feel like I could smush it some more. If I can just get it, let's see. We made a new MIDI channel. And I'm going to drag it in. I'm working as fast as I can. Let's get rid of the source material channel. And this one is going to be called Open Hi Hat. Where was the place? Well, luckily, I, I put down a marker where I want the new material to come in. And what I wanted to do is on the off beats.
right, I'm going to save as. I know it seems a little crazy, but one computer crash or hard drive crash and all your work is gone. And so I'd rather have way too many save as versions than not have my project if something goes wrong. All right, let's give it a listen from the start. Here we go. So I think I'm just going to add that last synth note to make my ending. There. And uh, there, I did it. A 90-second composition, you know, as good as I could in 90 minutes. Um, all from one kick drum sample as the source material using simpler and sampler and some audio effects like drum bus, glue compressor, saturator, and reverb, and chorus to create a, f a somewhat full sounding production with different parts, each you know representing what I uh, was hoping for and what I intended, and there it is. So hopefully that was helpful uh, to see and hear. I appreciate you watching and listening and uh, see you next time. Bye.